Ooh, what's going on, everybody? Alonzo here at GoCoastSmoke.com. Oh, wait, that's our old intro. I watched a bunch <laughs> of our old videos today, actually. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, uh, because Timmy was asking me, how, what was your editing style compared to Sabrina's? And I said, well, I don't necessarily think it's too, too different, but I did focus a lot. I liked, well, you remember, I, I liked music and B-roll. Like, I would try and match the footage to the music. And that well, was that's like still pretty similar. Th- that's, us, yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I said. Like, I don't think it's, but that's like what I would spend my time on. I would edit a video in like three, four hours. Yeah. But I would, and I would just like, I would go fast, but I would spend all my time on the cooking portion of it. So Yeah. And I think like you would, if you saw enough of a clip, you'd be like, okay, I'll just use that. Yes. So there'd be times where I'd be like, dang, you didn't use that shot. Yeah. But that's no, yeah. like you're, you're efficient. You're trying to just, you know, well, and, and because like I was, filming well we were filming and then i was editing and then i'd go to bed and go to work so like i was just trying to be so it really is so much better now that you're doing it but anyway back to the intro Mm -hmm. this is episode 24 and i didn't do our standard intro it's because in my head i watched the progression of our videos and the reason i watched them is because i don't want to talk about it too much but because we have a great guest today but on our episode next week we're gonna have our good friend sebastian and I want the episode to be all about self growth because we started with Sebastian yeah, and we've grown for three and a half years to what we are now, which I'm not saying is anything special to us. It's special. I don't know what everybody else thinks, but to us, us, it is very special. And I just want it to be about self growth. So I was watching our older videos and I was like, man, from what we, what we were to where we are, the improvement is astronomical i really think we can go back and redo a lot of videos because those i'm not gonna sit here and dog on us but they just weren't good we can do them so much better right now so anyway this is episode 24 and we're gonna have a great guest on today but we did want to recap how our weekend was so what did we do this past weekend well let's go back a couple weekends oh yeah because we skipped last week right because it was spring break yeah. So anyway, well, and, I mean, we had just gotten back into town and everything, so it was a little crazy. Yeah. So but where did we go? We went to Hernando, Mississippi. Sure. Which it is a beautiful place. Yeah. Um, it's one of those towns that you see on like television where it's like, oh, it's a small town, but yes. it's like beautiful and everybody's nice. I yeah. mean, there's so many places to go eat. There's things to do. I mean. Yeah. Local restaurants over there thrive. I yes. mean, here we don't experience that. No, we don't. Not in not in Portland where we live. So the reason that we went to Hernando, Mississippi, is we had a few things that we wanted to do. We were going to hang out with a few of our friends from the How to Barbecue Right team. Uh, Swine Life was there. We hung out with him. We had a great cook and a great day with him as well. I got to judge in a chili contest, which is really awesome. We checked out the shop, all that cool stuff, and it was just a great, great, great trip. I've told Mark how much we like Hernando, and he's like, I think for them being there, it's not as, I don't want to say it's not as special, because they all say, yeah, Hernando's great, but I feel like we really, really like it because we're just not from there, right? And we think it's special. So some of the great things that we found from being there, like you said, was local stuff is thriving. So Mm -hmm. like, what was it called? Buon Cibo. Yeah. There's a great little sandwich shop. Everything is locally sourced. The food is delicious. Area 151 was a place where we got ice cream one night. Cafe Cheese. I'm sorry, not Cafe Area, Cheese Fake. Area 51. Didn't I say that? You said 151. I thought it was Area 151. No, Area 51. 151 Pokemon maybe is what I'm thinking about. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Area 51 ice cream, a great place. Uh, City Hall Cheesecake, a great place. And... Man, it just we tried our best to eat local and no big box chains at all. Now, we did, of course, I think we had McDonald's one day, like real quick, something like that. But we tried our best to eat local, eat local only. We got desserts every night. Uh, we did something as a family every single day, and it was just really nice. It's nice to be in a different spot, and, man, I, we, we just had a blast. So I got to cook with Swine Life, Mark Williams, and we cooked a brisket, pork, and ribs. His brisket is incredible. His ribs are, in in my opinion, very, very delicious. I told you that as soon as I got back in the car, I was like, Mark makes a damn good rib. 
And it makes sense because he does so good on the MBN circuit. Uh, he's always, always, always hitting a first place rib. And man, he was showing me some of the stuff about MBN. Remember, I was telling you, he's working with his hands a lot because you have to talk to the judges there. Yeah, so today we're working, we worked on rendering the fat out of those ribs and really giving you a great tasting pork rib and this and that. And he's breaking them with his hands. And I won't say too much about it because maybe that's some of his secrets. But man, it was just so interesting to see how they're doing things over there. And he just makes a great rib, a great rib. Completely different from what we do here. It, right. it really, truly is. And that's what I told him. Ours are, it's a different texture. And the flavor, I mean, yeah, the flavor is pretty similar. He has a simple but delicious rib and the texture. I do like his texture better, uh, which we've always used to cook our ribs like that. But it's different here in Texas. You can't, mm -hmm. you cannot cook that texture for fork and knife. Now, I guess I don't want to say that I like his texture better because I do think we have learned how to cook our ribs very far and they still don't fall off the bone. I mean, you can take it off with nothing, but I mean, I, I think they both have their place, right? 100%. And uh, yeah, it, it was just a lot of fun. His brisket is different than ours, different than what we do here, but his burnt end was delicious, incredible. And he says that, he doesn't even really ever turn those in, which is crazy to me because his burnt end was very, very good. But, yeah, just shout out to the guys that uh, were there at the How to Barbecue Right HQ and, you know, gave us that hospitality on Saturday when we were there for the chili cook-off. Um, Austin, Mikey, Michael, all those guys, just absolutely amazing. Thanks for having us. We had a blast at the chili cook-off and tasting the chili and being around people. And it was just a, it was just a fun time. Yeah, Hernando is one of those towns where it's one main road. I mean, by the the second day, all we had to do was see which side of Commerce Street is it on, sure. and we would know how to get there. Um, and it's such a beautiful town. Everything is like brick buildings, even like the Taco Bell, yeah. and the KFC. They're all brick buildings, right? It's sure. just a really, really beautiful town. Uh, we went to this place to get an oil change called the Dipstick. Dip, really dip cool. sticks, dip sticks, dip sticks with yeah. an X. The dipstick. Yeah. <laughs> dip no, it was crazy because now, okay, I hope I'm not losing my mind. I don't know anywhere here that does this. So we just went through a little drive through. We stayed in our car. They changed our oil. They asked us, hey, do you want a tire rotation? Do you want new, new this? You want an air filter, this or that? And they did it all while we were chilling in the car. They were talking to us, being super nice. We met this young kid. I don't remember his name. Kaden. Was it Caden? Mm -hmm. I was going to say Caden. Man, if Caden ever watches this, uh, my wife and I talked about it. Just such a good kid. Yeah. Very respectful. Drives an hour to and from work every single day to be there. And I just know, I've always felt like I've been able to pinpoint people, good people. And I just feel like that yeah. kid was a good kid. For sure. And I feel like he's going to do something good in life. I can't explain it. I just feel like he is. He feels like he seemed like a really good kid. I just, that's all I really can say. Absolutely. Um, he even said, he was just like, man, if you, when you guys come back, you know, drop in, I'll be glad to change your oil again or glad to service your vehicle. And just, and that's because he even said, I know you guys are from Texas. I'll probably never see you again. And I said, man, we'll be back in May. <laughs> so you never know. Hopefully around that time we need an oil change. We can stop in. We can see Caden. Great guy. Uh, dipsticks was really fun experience for us, but yeah, I mean, overall the trip that we had as a family was really, really great. We, I mean, a drive for us turns into, I mean, we're trying to drive to 12 hours. It turns into 16 or whatever, Yeah. but man, it, it was, uh, it was truly an amazing trip and just being with the kids and everything is, I mean, that's what we live for. This is what we're chasing, right? Right. We're, we're chasing that. If we want to go to Hernando again tomorrow, we can. And we can film on the way. And really, the the biggest reason that we wanted to go is we, wa <laughs> we wanted to film some content over there at the How to Barbecue Right shop and with Mark and everything. And, man, I just I think we just found ourselves enjoying the time. For sure. And just didn't pick up the camera. Just didn't pick it up. And that's why we had no podcast last week. We had no video last week, and most of the time I would be kind of upset about that, but this time I wasn't because I really just felt like we were enjoying everything, and it was just, 
nice to be away just from everything besides being away from mom and dad. I don't like being away from mom and dad, but other than that, it w- it was good. It was a good switch up for us. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, people from Texas, we just, no matter what, where your city is, how small, um, whether it's nice or not, we just love being from Texas, right? Texas is home. Yeah. But it's one of those places where if you ever are just looking for a place to go get away for a little bit, that's a real nice town that most people probably don't even know about. Yeah. I mean, Hernando, Mississippi. I hadn't heard of it until the very first time we went over there to Malcolm's shop anniversary, And yeah, we instantly just really liked it. So shout out one more time to everybody that showed us love while we were there. It was a really fun trip. And once we got back, we still had a few days to relax, be at the house with the kids, clean up, and then make everything dirty again. Yeah. So <laughs> that's just life for us. Yeah. So this past weekend, we headed over to a really small town in Christine, Texas Yeah. for a CBA competition. It was less than 500 people for the population, I think, or yeah. less than 600. Very, very small event. Yeah. But, and, you know, we had some rain. Yeah. So, was, I mean, that, the weather was just crazy. It was a little cool and rainy, and then towards the end of the day, it was hot. Oh, we yeah. had mud everywhere over everything. It's still in the trailer. It's still in the trailer. Yeah. But uh, let's talk about how our results were for that. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, I told you this after the cook. I felt really confident, really confident. I felt like everything went well. I felt like everything tasted really, really good. And I told you, I think we have a shot. I think we have a shot at this thing. And I don't always do that because I don't like to really... Get ahead of yourself. Yeah, get ahead of myself. But I just felt strong. I felt strong about everything that we did. And we were close, but we didn't quite do it. So we ended up with a eighth place chicken. A sixth place rib, which that's the one I'm disappointed about because I'll tell you what. So we went over there with our friends Raul and Kevin, and I tasted all of our ribs. And I'm not going to lie to you. I really thought we were going to see some high rib calls just between us, and it just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kevin's rib, the texture was spot on. I felt like our rib, the texture was spot on and if you talk to Raul he thought his rib was banging so we really I don't want to say we expected but I think we thought we had an opportunity to get some high rib calls and it didn't happen so it was like dang it so when we got the sixth place rib I was like oh man really I mean I didn't show that but in my head I was like dang I think that that kind of puts us out of it I mean we can still be close but it kind of puts us out of it because at that point uh, there was already a couple of teams who had had higher walks than us so you're like, eh, they're probably going to get a pork call too or a rib call. And yeah, I just felt like at that point we weren't going to win it for sure. Or at least that's the way it felt. So anyway, and then we ended up with a third place brisket, which I did think that we had a great brisket. I, I thought it was a very, very good brisket. The tenderness was on point. We had to make a tough decision on whether or not to put in the burnt ends. And we decided against it. They were tender, super tender, but the... So, a couple of things. On the Wagyu burnt ends, they're very, 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 very rich. And I felt like they were a little bit rich. And then also, our bark was just a little bit set. A little more set than we wanted it. Was it hard? No. Was it like crunchy? No. But we really, really, really want them very, very soft. So, we made the decision to leave them out. And it was the right one because we got a third place brisket. Yeah. And the one I was disappointed about was chicken. Chicken because so we got an eighth place chicken. I thought, and I've said this to you in the past, because I've always been someone who wanted to cook thighs and wings because I think they're just that much better than a half chicken. Sure. Um I've never in my mind thought that a half chicken was gonna stand up to thighs or wings ever. Mm -hmm. Um, but this chicken that we made by far the best chicken that we've made half chicken wise. And I mean, it was, I thought it's been better than even some of the wings and the thighs that we've made. It was that good. So my hopes were really, really high for, um, I, I, 
even told your dad, I thought that was at least a top five chicken. Sure. Yeah, of course, I don't know what everyone else's chicken tastes like. It was just a good chicken. But yeah, that's just, it's one of those things where you cook chicken, right? And you think, oh, this is good. This is good. Or with any protein. Mm -hmm. And then it's not until you actually do it right that you realize, oh, those ones. Were not good. Yeah, that wasn't it. Yeah. This was it. For sure. And so I thought we could have placed a lot higher than that. No, I agree. I really do. And um, I was pretty much, to be honest, even though I thought it was better than 8th Place Chicken, I was just relieved to hear our song. Yeah, typically when <laughs> we know? hear a call for chicken, we know, okay, this is going to be a good day A good for day, us. for sure. Right. Because chicken is our nemesis. But I've told you guys recently, we are determined, yeah, absolutely determined to get chicken down. I'm not saying it's going to be quick, but I can... I can promise you we are going to do everything in our power to get chicken down. That's I'm not promising it's ever going to happen, but we're going to work our butts off to get it. Like I said a second ago, I was just really relieved to hear our song. So to get an eighth place, while yes, I'm not going to lie, it is a little bit disappointing, I was more just, oh, man, okay, here we go. Right. We got a shot. And then once ribs was over, I kind of knew that our shot was over because uh, Backward Jack had a first place chicken and a fourth place rib. Yep. And CB had a fifth place chicken and a second rib or something like that. So they both, CB and Backward Jack, they were right there. We knew it was going to be them or... We thought uh, maybe we were third, but then he got that first place brisket call. And, yeah. You know. Yeah, so... He got the first place brisket call. We pretty much knew CB sealed it up with that. And uh, we actually thought, I still thought we were third overall because we had three walks. Kevin, our friend Kevin, (laughs) my friend Kevin, had two walks. And so we were thinking, okay, Kevin's fourth, we're third. Kevin ended up getting third. We got fourth by 0.7 points because, and it, it makes sense because it's a cumulative in CBA. So all the points added together is what gives you the GC. And his rib was good. It was 12th place, but the scores were high because it was still a good rib. Well, it was funny because I heard, because uh, Raul and Kevin were next to me. So I believe I heard Kevin mention like, dang, I didn't even get a, a rib call. And uh, somewhere towards the end, um, I think Raul said, hey, yeah, you never know. And I think he's just messing around, right? That like he could get in the top, yeah. you know, whatever. And I don't think Kevin was expecting that either. Yeah. But it was funny. Uh, and then once they called, and he's like, oh, yeah, it must have been like an 11th rib or something like that. For sure. Yeah. And and like I said, it makes sense because the ribs were. Yeah. That's how texture. crazy awards can go sometimes. For sure. Too. I mean, you just don't know. You just don't know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it was a great weekend. Like I said, we got to hang out with Kevin Raul. Phil was right next to us, too. So yeah. we hung out with Phil Friday night. And uh, we went to Chili's Friday night. You guys went and did your thing. So typically you guys stay with us in the actual trailer. But because we knew the weather was going to be bad, we're like, eh, let's try and keep everything inside of the trailer rather than pull it all out. So I stayed in the trailer by myself, which I do think it was the right call Mm -hmm. uh, just for us to make sure everything is as comfortable as possible. And so we went and ate Chili's. You guys did your thing. We went back to the to the hotel and I'm sorry, I went back to the trailer and I fell asleep. And then I hear Raul and Kevin like messing with the generator late. And I just popped out of the trailer half asleep with my shirt off and everything. I'm like, dude, what are y'all doing? And they're like, dang, bro, were you asleep? I was like, yes, I was asleep. So it was actually kind of funny, but Saturday was a great day. Not too far from the house, hour and 25 minutes up the road. So we got home pretty quickly and it was all gravy. But now Uh, We just posted a video on Tuesday. So you guys are listening to this on Friday. We posted a video on Tuesday that kind of capped our weekend in Christine. So we didn't do a full YouTube video the way we typically do. We basically showed you guys some tricks and some tips on how we box for CBA competitions. And I think you guys liked it. We've so far gotten really good feedback on it. And uh, I've had a lot of people reach out. What knife is that? Mm -hmm. So I'll, Like, a lot of people have reached out and asked me what knife that is. So, uh, I think, hopefully, you guys are enjoying the videos. Let us know what you want to see coming up. I would like to have a video where we focus heavily on every single protein just a little bit more. But, for now, you know, everything's everything's going as planned. And now, let's move on to a really great interview with the president of IBCA. 
Well, first and foremost, we want to thank our guest for being on the show today. And just in case anybody doesn't know who you are, go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, I'm Dennis Butterworth. I'm the founder and CEO of War Pig Barbecue, Elite Barbecue Products, and I'm also the president of IBCA. Sweet. So funny story. I don't have this on my notes or anything, but man, a long time ago when we first started cooking, uh, we had a friend who we loved to cook with all the time. And man, we would use ham grenade and snafu on everything. You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Remember that? So, so Sebastian would come over and at the time we thought we were competition cookers, right? And so we're just, we're going ham grenades on everything. Snafu's on top of everything. We're like, oh my gosh, there's no way anybody will ever beat us. You know, we, we learned pretty quickly, but uh, we've known about your products for a long time and we've been using them. So uh, absolutely amazing products that we'll get to in just a little bit. But uh, I did want to throw that tidbit in there because we have known about the products for quite a long time. So you introduced yourself. You let us know that you do own War Pig Barbecue. You also mentioned that you're the president of IBCA. And one of the things that we did want to get into right off the bat was what does being the president of IBCA entail for you is is barbecue your full-time job now you would think that so being the president of ibca um it's an honor first of all uh to be voted you know into the presidency um it was pretty easy for me this this time uh when i ran because i ran against nobody so (laughs) (laughs) it was kind of i just needed one vote you know and i got one vote so i was happy with that but there you go um it's you know, IBCA is the, the the oldest and biggest sanctioned body, barbecue sanctioning body in Texas. Mm-hmm. It's old as KCBS. I think we were founded within months in the same year. Um, so there's a there's a huge history there, and uh, it doesn't uh, you know that that doesn't go away when I think about you know the the, the shoes that I'm filling and, and who I'm coming after, right? Who the presidents before me and the executive directors, all the different names they used to have before me, um, who sat in that seat and controls the board. So it's a, it's a big deal for me. Um, you know, it's a, it's a volunteer organization. None of us, uh, take paychecks for it, you know, so you're completely volunteering your time, your energy, your money, um, to be part of our organization and grow the sport of competition barbecue. So barbecue is, I put in enough hours for barbecue to be my full-time job, but I actually have a day job Mm -hmm. uh, that pays the bills and and Warp Gig and IBCA allow me to live my dream right now. So, but yeah, being the president, um, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a fun challenge. It's a struggle. Sometimes today was one of those days where, you know, it, it can be really quiet on the barbecue world. And then all of a sudden, here come, you know, a hundred emails, you know, regarding IBCA from our board and from our members. And, and so it's just all a matter of um, prioritizing and, uh, and keeping, keeping your eye on the, the prize, which is, you know, growing the sport and uh, growing IBCA into what it can be, you know, the premier sanctioned body in the country. For sure. And so IBCA has recently announced that they'll be looking for a pool of certified judges. So is there going to be a set amount that you're going to try and have certified at each competition or certain percentage that are certified? So first I would like to just, just a bit of uh, correction, I guess it's um, we're, we're not calling them certified. Um, We're just calling them registered taste judges. Okay. Gotcha. Very similar to certified, right? KCBS uses the term certified non full transparency. I just don't want to be, confused with anything another organization's doing sure Mm -hmm. Um, um, but i do like what they've done over the years they've built a nice platform of taste judges that travel the country judging cook-offs they that's what they do for a hobby i've spoken to many of them Mm -hmm. um and and since we're so huge we're the largest barbecue state in the country there's no doubt as far as competitions and we have a lot of people that love to judge barbecue so why not work on a developer program where we can register these folks, um, give them a little bit of, of education on what competition barbecue is, what each score, each criteria is, and, you know, what it means, what what a low score means to that cook, mm. a high score means to the cook. And what we kind of expect as far as cooks to receive it from the judges, you know, is um, 
you know, as far as consistency and those kinds of things, you know, um, just we want to instruct them on what a table of death is, what an angel table is. And, and, and really it's, we want to get is, I'm sorry, I'm way off of your question, but as far as numbers, go, no, it's great. A number in mind. Um, we want to get as many as possible and we want to develop them into a program where we, they have their own portal on our website that they can log into. They can check out our map. They'll have their own map with cook-offs and they can pick which ones they want to go to email the promoter and say, Hey, I'm, so-and-so, I'm a registered uh, taste judge with IBCA. I'm going to come judge your event. Um, and, and that way, those, ta- those promoters know, hey, I've already got 10 judges coming from out of town. It makes my job easier as a promoter. That's 10 less. I got to go round up. But I, I think if, if we get to a point where we have at least one registered judge on every table, I think the cooks will feel a little more um, comfortable going into those events, knowing, all right, at least we have – a cooks or judges that have judged before and that know what to expect because you know when when you're at joe schmo from the local vfw that's sitting at the bar and they come grab you to judge barbecue you have no idea what you're getting yourself into yeah you have no idea what you're about to taste and how how different it is than the barbecue you're used to right sure and we want people to really understand competition barbecue is a lot different than home cooked barbecue and restaurant barbecue. And it really should be judged as competition barbecue and not what you're used to at home. Sure. That's where we're at right now in the world of all the sanctioned bodies. It's always been that way. Um, and so we're trying to develop this program. It's going to take a while. It's, I mean, if, if I can leave my term as president and have this in place, I'll feel the most, like I'm the most successful president ever. You know, I think sure. left the organization in a great, a great spot. And one of the things that I love hearing you talk about is that you want these judges to look at it from the cook's point of view as well. Because like you said, man, I, sometimes I don't think they realize that giving us a five or a seven, it, it takes us out of it. You know, yeah. um, it really, it really truly does. And, and if it, if it is that bad, okay. But if it's not, you know, try and be a, I don't want to say like give the points, but Man, I don't think that sometimes they realize what they can be doing to us with those bad scores. So I love that you're bringing that that head cook perspective to everybody over there. And just to kind of piggyback off of what you were talking about, you know, one of the things that I really do love about IBCA is the fact that everybody is turning in the same thing, right? So, like, everyone's turning in a half chicken. Everyone's turning in eight ribs and eight slices of brisket, which I really find actually very challenging because in other sanctioning bodies, if my half chicken sucks, I can shy away from it and I can throw wings in the box. And we all know wings are delicious, but it forces you to really learn how to nail that half chicken, which is something that we've struggled with. Uh, But, you know, I really do love that about IBCA. So it does feel like a level playing field in a sense to me. Um, But that being said, do you ever see that changing or do you think that you'll have any other meat additions to IBCA? No, I I think IBCA is content with being a three meat organization. The last thing we want to do is change our identity and offer a fourth meat and a three meat option. You know, it's just I don't think that's good for organizations to do. Sure. Um, I think you stick, you know, you dance with the one that brought you. We used to have in the old days of IBCA, we had pork as an option. Mm-hmm. Um, and not a promoter could choose to do pork or not do pork. Um, and what happened was a lot of the West Texas area cookoffs chose pork. And we started seeing that a lot of the top 10 overall in IBCA were all from that West Texas region. The reason was they were getting extra points because they had a fourth category. Absolutely. Um, and it really wasn't being calculated fairly against all the three meat cookoffs down in Houston, San Antonio, in, in Corpus, and in, in Dallas area. Um, so IBCA voted, you know, way before me to drop that option completely and just be a three-meat category um, cook-off. And I, I think that's the smart choice for us. Um, I don't see it going away. I don't see uh, us ever leaving the half chicken. I think the half chicken is, is something that's, you know, been synonymous with IBCA and, and most Texas cook-off organizations from day one. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether you like it or not, I've, 
chicken's always been my worst category, but you know, it is what it is. It's, it's, um, it's a tough one. Um, the one thing just as a cook, not as a board member. Um, so just speaking as, you know, Dennis Butterworth, the cook, um, I would love to see us not have a rule that says how we should turn it in. You know, if you want to, if you want to turn it, turn it in perpendicular to the hinge, right. You, I, I think you should be able to do that. Any, that should be your only sort of creativity. And sure. This is how you turn it in as far as your ribs, your brisket, those kind of things. Um, but I don't see us ever allowing burn ins. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're, you know, sliced brisket. It, it's just, it's easier that way. And that way everybody's judged on the same thing. Same merits. Yeah, no. And, and, and truly that is one of the things I love about it because if I lose, let's just say you beat me in brisket, your slice was just straight better than mine that day. Um, in other sanctioning bodies, it could have been that you filled burnt tins in there and you, you beat me with, with meat candy, which we all know burnt tins are delicious, but I do like that. Like you said, it's, it's judged on the same exact merit. So it's, you know what you need to work on and it's, it's pretty much that simple. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, you want to be judged against the same items everywhere in the box, you know, across the tables. Um, you know, and I cook all the other organizations, you know, I always have, I, I never shy down from that mm -hmm. um, because I like to challenge myself on different things, but I find myself, you know, in brisket, even though I make a mean burn in and I've walked with burn ins in the box, I still just cook, turn in slices. It, it just takes one judge to not know what a burn in supposed to taste like mm -hmm. and they get one and it's, and they think it's too overcooked and, you know, it, it just doesn't taste right. And then your whole box is gone to crap. So I, I believe in giving them less, right? Give them exactly what you want them to eat. Don't give them a choice. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something that we, we have struggled with in the past. We're newer cooks, um, but we're really, we've dove headfirst into it. And, man, sometimes we're a little stubborn, like, no, the we have to turn in burnt ends. And, man, it's it's very evident that they just didn't like them. And it hurts us, right? No one, in, I mean, no restaurants in Texas serve burnt ends, right? So no one grew up eating burnt ends here. Sure. Uh, you have to go out of state. You know, I, I uh, used to go up to Missouri a lot when I was in college. And that's the first time I had burnt ends. And so when you don't have people that grew up eating them and that know how a burnt end is supposed to be, why would you give those to judges? And then on the flip side of that, it makes me laugh when I see all these Texas cooks in Texas cook-offs who can barely make brisket, like barely got walks in brisket ever. And now they're throwing burnt ends in the box because they can and I'm like, if you couldn't make slices correct, you damn sure aren't making those. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a whole different game on the burn -in. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's... Uh... I'm glad at IBC, we don't have to worry about it. You know, it's just <laughs> yeah. slices uh, and half chicken and sli uh, ribs. There you go. Or ribs. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I think that's what makes IBCA such a, a great sanctioning body to go to if you're a first-time cook. Uh, because, like you said... You, it's going to give you the experience of trying to nail the, exactly what you're cooking and not try and do anything extra or fancy. You're just learning to cook exactly what you're supposed to, and that's going to give you a lot of experience to then try and venture into other sanctioning bodies. So what do you think that IBCA offers that other sanctioning bodies maybe don't? First and foremost, our scoring tool. There's there's no more bulletproof scoring tool than what IBCA has. Um, our scoring tool, we spent a lot of money developing it. When I was vice president, I, uh, I hated what we had, and I hated the one we had before it. And we kept bouncing back and forth between the two tools, and they kept failing us both, right? And I wanted something that I knew would cost money to be developed, but could be perfect, you know, as near perfect as possible, everything, you know, it's computer, so nothing's perfect. So I went to a, a developer in oil and gas that I know that writes software, you know, million dollar programs. And I, I had him give us a quote to write a, a software uh, for judging. And that's, he, he knocked it out of the park. We've been almost a year with it now. Uh, we've had zero issues, zero, um, zero changes, you know, on Monday, we've had Everything has just been legit. You know, when you go to an IBCA event, you know that that your your results are judged properly and accurately. Um, it's not networkable, right? So you don't have any fears of somebody logging in and changing your scores. You know, um, you know all the conspiracy theorists out there. You don't have that with ours. Mm -hmm. 
So I think peace of mind is what you get from IBCA. Um, you also get a little bit of um, heritage and legacy, right? I mean, we're, we've been around forever. It's, it's that gold standard organization um, that when you, when you become the, the, in the top 10 of our cookers of the year, it really means something because, you know, there's a lot of people that came before you and, and um, a lot of legends have sat in those seats, you know? And so um, I think that really means a lot when you, when you hit that milestone of hitting top 10 overall at an IBCA, you know, overall for the year in IBCA. Um, and then just, um, I think IBCA events, it, it's, it's a little more difficult, in my opinion, to win an IBC event than other other cookoffs. For one, you have to please ten judges, not five. You know, you, we have uh, two rounds, so you have your first round. Um, we pull the top fifteen from that first round; it goes to the second round, and so you've got a second round of judges that you have to please, and it's five judges on each round. Um, so it's it's a little harder. So definitely, I think you 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 get a really strong sense of accomplishment when you come away with an IBC GC. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I mean, yeah, we sure. it took us a long time. Um, I mean, I guess it took us what like ten months, nine, uh, eleven months to to get it. Whereas I think, it, how how long did it take us? I think it took us three months or four months with CBA. It took us like uh, like eleven months or ten months with uh, IBCA. Mm -hmm. We recently just got our first one. I mean, it was a little over a month ago, and um, I can honestly say I was like, oh my gosh, finally an IBCA GC. You know, it just uh, I, I really did feel that it feels good to me, to us to have them in multiple sanctioning bodies. It really does. But it did oh, take yeah. me, it did take me longer to get it in IBCA for sure. So yeah. it, it's a, it, it's a challenge. IBCA has always been tough for me. I've always excelled in the single round uh, cookoff systems, mm -hmm. um, you know, KCBS or CBA. Um, so that second round is what gets a lot of people and, and it's always gotten me. So um, I, prefer single round systems and uh, everybody thought when I became president, hell, they thought when I was vice president that I would push for IBCA to go single round, but it's really all about what the members want, you know, and one thing as a board, as an org for the organization is we truly care what our members want. We listen to them. We're elected by them to mm -hmm. spend their money on, on our sanctioning body. So if they wanted single round and they wanted us to vote on it, they would tell us, we've asked them and they've all said, no, we like two round systems. Um, so that's what, you know, that's what we're sticking with. So if years from now, IBCA switches to single round, it's, I hope it's truly because that's what the members want. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's just, um, you know, there's all kind of little intricacies with the scoring and, you know, the, the criteria, how, you know, you can, you can be judged on seven to 10 mm -hmm. right, or five to 10, you know, in, uh, I think KCBS is five to nine, right? So mm -hmm. those different scores you can get. And and we argue about this a lot in board meetings and, you know, Hey, should we drop the, the five, go to a six or should we drop the 10 and go to a nine? Because maybe judges taste judges think there's no such thing as perfect barbecue. So they don't want to give you a tip mm. in your mind. Those kind of things. So those conversations happen all the time. Um, but right now we're pretty content with leaving things the way they are and, seeing how the scoring season shakes out well we're, we're obviously covering a lot on ibca but we want to get into dennis and Warpig here in a second but the last thing i did want to ask about ibca is man so like i said we barely recently got our first gc and the favorite thing of mine that came from it was that challenge coin um obviously this probably happened well before you got there but do you know where that came from or where, where did that idea come from yeah, I, this was um, yeah, this was definitely in place before I got there, even before I became vice president. Uh -huh. uh, so this one, and this is really cool. So this one is is an IBCA challenge coin, but this is what you get when you're on the board. Also, it says board member. Sweet. Uh, yeah. So really cool to have. Um, just a little token for us to remember, you know, our time as a board member. Um, but you know, the challenge coins come from the military, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's always been a military thing that when you when you meet somebody, um, usually a higher up position and you, you perform well in front of them, they'll give you a challenge coin of theirs um, and you collect them. I have a huge collection at my uh, office um, of the different coins I've received. And so now it seems like a lot of people are doing them, you know, I have a bunch here on my desk, but like I'm on the board of Folds of Honor. We have our own 
Um, and it's just, it's, it's pretty cool to see you collect them. And then when you get 10 GCs, you get a 10 GC challenge coin as well. Sweet. We have a couple of cook -off, cooks from IBC that actually have the two, like we don't have a 20 GC uh, coin, but we have several that have two 10 GC coins. Nice. Uh, which is nice. I mean, that's, that's a huge accomplishment. Is Randall Kendrick one of them? Yeah. Yeah, he's a... That, I, I think he's almost a three of those. That dude Jeez. is one of the best guys I've ever met. I think he is. Yeah, he's a solid individual. Yeah, great, great, great person. Uh, great ambassador for barbecue. And I think a uh, great IBCA uh, ambassador as well. He's uh, just a solid dude all around. If Randall's ever listening to this, uh, shout out to you. Um, but yeah, like I said, now we, we kind of want to get into to War Pig Barbecue and your products and, and stuff like that. So, um First and foremost, uh, anybody that knows you probably knows that you can go to any HEB and pick up your pick up your products. But mm -hmm. if if not HEB, where can people find your products? We always have it on our website, uh, warpigbarbecue dot com, mm -hmm. um, and we ship all over the country. I actually, shipped to Australia uh, this year. Nice first time. Um, but um, several of the smaller, you know, we still go after the small mom and pop shops, the boutique barbecue stores, like the barbecue store, like South Texas Barbecue Kitchens, those kind of places. Um, the meat markets, you know, we try to get in every meat market. Um, we're in a couple of Ace Hardwares, um, you know, and then big box retail, obviously HEB is our largest customer, um, but we're, we're working every day. Um, <laughs> I love that. I say the word we all the time, but it'll just to make, make us sound like a bigger company. <laughs> and then I use the word us. I am the entire company. <laughs> I am the employee number uno, right? And I don't even take a paycheck, but um, yeah, but yeah, I'm just, I, I work every day to try to get in more retail locations across the country. So if you're in other States, there's some uh, uh, fresh time grocery stores that we're in. There's about 70 of those locations that we're in. Uh, about 500 different stores nationwide. Sweet. Retail, uh, locations. Yeah, and and I've been following in a couple of weeks as well. Oh, well, so that's that's great. Yeah, yeah. Amazon Prime. Um, I always was kind of fearful of it. You know, it just heard a lot of bad things, but. I really get tired of having the shipping cost conversation with customers. Oh man, it's yeah. tough. They, they think we jack it up, right? And it's just, it, it is what it is. It's expensive. So I figure why not put it on prime and let them get free shipping on prime. You know, of course we're going to have to raise the price of the product. Sure. I think you still save money going through prime than buying it off my website. Once we get it up there. For sure. Yeah, no, we've, we've had that conversation so many times people, they just don't understand. We are not Amazon, right? So yeah. it costs us money to buy boxes and tape and then fuel to take it somewhere or, you know, for a service. It just, there's so many things that add up. People just don't, they don't realize, um, you know, we're in the same business. Nowhere near as, as big as what you're doing, but we're in the same business. So we do uh, understand it a little bit more, but that's, uh, that's awesome. I know at one point I saw that you got some sort of, I don't know if it was like a belt buckle or something. You hit over a million dollars in sales at HEB, which when I saw that, I was like, wow. But I, I believe it also too, because like even at our local HEB, you go in there. I So I walk through the barbecue spice aisle every time, you know, because I dream of being on those shelves one day. And man, I always see people picking your stuff up. I'm like, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense there. That's pretty well. I'm very blessed first and foremost. You know? For sure. I, I, I tell a story all the time, but I had sold 50 bottles of FUBAR when I created it. Um, but f before I entered HEB's Quest for Texas Best Contest, mm -hmm. and, um, I, uh, I ended up winning it out of like 900 contestants. Um, and that was in 2017. And so in 2018, we launched an HEB with one, one sauce. I just had FUBAR at the time. And I sold 50,000 bottles that year, you know, so it's, it's, it's been a wild run. Um, we're over $2 million now. Well, wow. and, um, and across their registers at HEB. So that's what the belt buckle was for. They treat us very well. You know, we're part of uh, an alumni, a family, uh, the quest for Texas best con contestants, you know, not just winners, but anybody that was in it, that was a finalist. We're all this big family. They have a special Facebook group for us. They invite us to talk at different uh, events they have, but they keep track of ourselves. And, uh, 
they created this belt buckle called the million dollar club for anybody. When you get to a million dollars in sales through the store, you get, you join that club. And I mean, there are people that hit that million dollars in the first year, you know, it just depends on the type of product that they have, Mm -hmm. you know, like some of the products are $15, right? Like if there's a wine or something so that, you know, it doesn't take much to get a million dollars after that. So uh, it took me a little longer, but it didn't matter, man. When they handed me that buckle, it was, uh, I think it was on my fifth year I got it. So, Man, that's awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. Just kudos to you for that. I mean, if if you guys haven't tried the products, I mean, we've tried so many of them, and they're all really, really good. I, I love 50 Cow as well. The it, So if you put it on your brisket, anybody that doesn't know, I mean, you probably explain it better than me. If you put it on your brisket, it literally makes it look not black, but it, it gives it a darker color. It makes it look like it's forming a bark on it, you know? I mean, it literally says, you know, it's bark in the bottle. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what we created. It's a, it's a black barbecue sauce. It's the only black barbecue sauce on the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was designed to give your brisket bark. So the idea is you put it on. When I take it out of the camber, take it out of foil, I, I sauce it with 50 cal, just a thin glaze of it i brush it on it's the only one that i actually brush on Mm -hmm. uh, because i don't care about strokes you know brush strokes when i'm cutting little thin slices Uh, and then you put it on a smoker and let it set for 30 minutes 30 to 40 minutes depending on how hot your smoker is until it dries it has to dry and that's the number one issue i see with people because i can tell on facebook if you post a picture of your brisket you have 50 count even if you don't tag me it's fine if that's your little secret that you know you'll tag 20 other products but (laughs) <laughs> War pig and 50 cal are never part of that tag group. It's fine. I know you used it because you got a black sauce on there. Yeah. But it's that people that don't let it set and they, they you go to slice it and it, the sauce slides off, you know, and it looks messy because mm-hmm. it has to sit. Once it sets and gets crusty, man, that is a, that's a game changer. Yeah. So like I said, anybody that hasn't tried the products, you absolutely need to. And do you have any more products that might be coming out anytime soon? So, yeah, actually, um, so obviously the, this past year we launched Sergeant Butter, which is my uh, all-purpose garlic butter and onion rub. Which is great, by the way. And thank you. It's blowing up. HEB is bringing that in in May. Um, so they were super impressed with it. They're also bringing in Bullzuka, which is our beef rub. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I, I've been working for a couple of years, and I, I haven't formulated. I have it semi-bottled and labeled um a, a japanese barbecue sauce so that's a nice to come out with um i got on this kick of cooking japanese food um probably thanks to tiktok you know and <laughs> yeah. I started doing open dishes that were japanese or chinese flavored you know and um there's japanese barbecue sauce out there that was blowing up amazon and i tried it and just fell in love with it so i was like well i gotta make something like it you know i need to make my own um, so it's, it's ready to come out. It's just, um, you know, it is, man, you get to all these products, you, you need to find a customer for them. So it's, mm. how do I want to invest all this money to launch it if I don't have a, a big box store to carry it? So for sure, but I, I think this year you'll see it roll out. Um, and we'll, we'll give it a shot on Amazon first and see how it does. Cause that- it'll be, it'll be our first sauce that's bottled in plastic. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because you do have glass on all your other stuff. I just yeah. now that you say that, I I, re- I realize that for sure. Yeah, it'll be a a, a ten ounce plastic bottle versus twenty one ounce uh, glass bottles, which are hell to ship. I mean, it's they're <laughs> two pounds by the time you you know wrap it and bubble wrap. It's a two pound bottle. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's why it costs so much to ship. People don't understand. Like, <laughs> yeah. One bottle as it does two bottles. Oh no, so for sure. My website. A year and a half ago to where you could only order bundles of two or more mm-hmm. it was really just to save the customer shipping you know and that way i wasn't bottling one boxing up one bottle yeah so two and save them money um but yeah as far as products i've got that i've got my chicken rub will be coming out this year as well it kind of complete the you know brisket rib chicken um um trifecta there for rubs um and then I have a line of steak rubs I plan on uh, launching as well. That's awesome. Wing sauce. I've, I've had a wing sauce in my pocket for a while. I've had a white barbecue sauce, a mustard sauce, like a, a whole low sugar line. Nice. About coming out with. So it really just depends on how sales go because I let sales fund everything. I for sure. In my pocket if I don't have to. Yeah, no, we're, we're the same exact way. We actually, we have probably like three, three products that we're, I mean, we, we've even gotten them from the co-packer and everything, but it's like, eh. 
you know, I mean, you know how it is. You got to buy X amount of labels. You got to, you got to buy UPC codes. You got to pay an artist to make you the label. It's, it's a lot that goes into it. And the minimums, right? I mean, oh yeah, the minimums are not that bad um, compared to, you know, like like my I think my co packer my rub minimum is like two hundred pounds, right? Sure. So that's in essence two hundred bottles, right? Divided by six for you know six per case, but uh, so it's not a lot. But sauce is three hundred gallons. That's a lot of sauce. Yeah. yeah. Pallet. That's a pallet and a half. Yeah. And those are li- are liable to expire before you sell all of them. If you're not in a big store, you're not moving it quickly. Sure. People always ask, me, you know, why did you launch the white barbecue sauce? And I'm like, ah, you know, like, <laughs> I don't that shit forever, you know? <laughs> money. Yeah. So, just yeah. So I could sell a couple hundred of them. I need to be able to, to move thousands of bottles of them. Yeah, no doubt. Right. Yeah, no doubt. I think it's a, it's, I always get a, a chuckle out of talking to people that they do understand it. Right. Cause it's like, yeah, and you, you know, the struggle and you, you go through it. And like I said, a lot more than us because you have, you know, more products and uh, you're in a lot more stores, but I do get a chuckle out of it because I'm like, man, finally somebody that understands the way we feel a lot of the times. It's a cash flow game and you can get cash flow poor really fast. Oh man. <laughs> trust me. We on your stuff to sell, right? When we first started, I think we didn't, we did not know what we were getting ourselves into, you know. Yeah. Uh, we lost a lot of money in the very beginning. I mean, a lot of money, but you know, things are starting to look up. Our, our, we're getting, you know, our channels growing. We're getting our name out there a little bit in the barbecue world, and things are looking up. So we're, uh, we're happy nonetheless. But uh, yeah. So, so back to you though. Um, we're just about done here again. Thank you for your time today. So one of the things that we do like to ask um, now. I know you used to compete a lot. I'm not really sure if you do as much anymore, but we do like to ask, what is something that you cannot go without at a barbecue competition? Um, definitely a white monster. Nice. That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. White monster in the morning on game day. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, I don't drink coffee. Yeah. I get through the army without drinking coffee, but uh, when I, I found white monster. I was like, okay, I like this. Yeah. Uh, so that's a definite, um, I gotta have music. I, I was a DJ for 15 years. So that's why when you see my trailer, it has the best sound system in the world. Oh dude. So I, I love music. Um, I, I can't have a cook off without it. So other than that, man, you know, give me food bar and ham grenade and I'm fine. Yeah. The others are great, you know, and I can use them, but I, I can do pretty well with just those two products. Yeah, no, that's awesome. No, we so we competed at Danny Deets, and uh, we were uh, probably, I mean, we weren't that far from you, but, man, when we drove by, we were like, dude, look at his setup. It is insane. He, you had all the music. It was like, this dude is literally having a party. Like, he's literally having a party. It was- well, you're on it so much, right? Like, you're on it. You know, I, I was doing 40 a year, um, even up to last year. Uh-huh. Uh, definitely cut <laughs> I've only cooked Houston this year, so I've cut back a lot. Um, but when you're on something that much and you're you're away from home, you want it to be have all the creature comforts, right? Sure. To make you want to go do it. If I, if I didn't have that trailer, I wouldn't want to go do as much. Um, you know, the two ACs in it just for the summertime and the, the TV on the outside for playoff baseball and Aggie football. And then, of course, the sound system just so we can just jam out whenever we want. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So do you plan on uh, any cook-offs coming up? Yeah. Um, actually, I was looking through my paperwork, and I, I want it. So one thing we do at our uh, annual meeting at uh, IBCA is we give away free entries to cook-offs. Sweet. And I found this one that I won last year. It's the 33rd annual Roughneck Chili and Barbecue Cook-Off in Luling. It's coming up in March. So I may go do that one, March 30th. Okay. Since it's free. Yeah, there you go. You <laughs> might as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm a cheap ass. I'll, I'll, I'll drive up to Luling for a free entry. So, yeah, heck yeah. Uh, and then in April, uh, we travel to Alabama to do a KCBS cook-off. Nice. Smoking on the Falls. It's one of our favorite events to go do. Um, it's definitely worth the drive. Um, in May, we have our first IBCA cook-off in Michigan. Sweet. So, wow. I have to cook that one. Um, and my buddy Tony Tanachi is driving down from Canada to bring his trailer so we can cook on it. Mm. Um, that'll be a fun cook off. It'll be, you know, beautiful weather in May in Michigan, you know, compared to Texas. Oh, for sure. Right. Actually, it's pretty chilly. 
Um, but I don't know, man. I just uh, I play it by ear week to week. I, I, I'm the worst guy with a calendar because I just wait till Monday and then decide, you know, hey, uh, I think we'll go here this weekend, you know, and, and give it a shot. But I really told the, the members this year that I think I would just rather work on being president than being, you know, war pig the cook mm-hmm. and try to make the organization – mold it in my vision for IBCA. So that's, uh, that's what I've been doing, you know, just working behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, from what we can see, um, you know, outside, it does look like things are already happening since you've taken over. And, uh, you know, it it seems like IBCA is even more engaged, even like on social media and stuff. I've just, I've seen things coming up so I can tell what you're doing. I think it's awesome. And like I said, we really enjoy competing in IBCA events. So, um, just great job on everything you guys are doing. So last thing before we let you go, you got any shout outs or anything like that, man? Yeah, it's funny you, you said that. Cause I literally was like, man, I got to give a shout out to my board of directors for know? sure. Cause it's not me, you know, it, it's all of us. And, and we, I, I am blessed with a board that gets along first and foremost, and uh, is made up of cooks and head judges. Mm-hmm. So, and promoters, we all come from different walks of life, but man, they're just, they all see the vision I see. And, and they want IBCA to be the best that can possibly be. So huge shout out to Oscar, my vice president, and all the rest of them um, all the way down. Uh, and for, you know, we've got some new board members that stepped up and filled some gaps where we had some board members drop off. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty cool to see membership wanting to join the board and, and be part of it. So because if no one ever signs up to be a board member, it just goes away, you know. So yeah. Big shout out to to, to all the boards that are out there, um, especially the ones that aren't paid, um, you know, that volunteer their time to grow this sport that we love and that we love to hate. And, uh, yeah. and uh, it's just, you know, God bless you for whatever one of you do. Yeah. Um, so huge shout out, huge shout out to, to all the manufacturers out there, all the, the guys in the struggle, bottling up bottles of rub and sauce in their kitchens, um, trying to get in the game. Yeah. I'm always here. Uh, you can find my email address. I mean, it's super simple. Dennis at warpigbarbecue.com. If you have any questions, uh, I don't mind answering anything. So I had a lot of people help me along the way. Um, and not really a lot, but a couple of solid individuals in this game that are still in this game, like out in Paris with um, Chupacabra. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he he passed down some knowledge and some wisdom to me. And, uh, and I plan on doing that as long as I can. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, like I said, thank you so much for uh, being on the show today. I thought it was a great show. Anybody that's not cooked an IBCA event, we highly encourage you to go out there and enjoy it, uh, meet some people. There's a lot of great people out there. The thing that I love, you know, like Jamie Roby and those guys, they actually put signs up now. Hey, we're, we're part of the board. Come talk barbecue with us. Very inviting people. Jamie's a great guy. Uh, we have a great friend, Zach, that cooks IBCA. Yeah, yeah. So guys are all great. I mean, it's it's a it's a fun group to be around. You know, just no doubt. We're trying to bring a little bit of excitement and energy back to IBCA, and 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 it's just fun to see people are getting on board with it and seeing the the turnaround. Because there was a couple of years there where it was, you know, doom and gloom, doom and gloom. You know, we had a lot of issues. So this has been exciting to see the transformation, and and I'm just excited to see what uh, what the future holds for us. Absolutely. Well, man, like I said, one more time, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate your time. And uh, everybody, Dennis Butterworth, War Pig Barbecue President of IBCA. <laughs> thanks, guys. And thanks again to Dennis for being on the podcast today. I thought that was a great interview, a lot of insight when it came to IBCA and what they're looking to do in the future. So uh, IBCA, a great sanctioning body here in Texas. And, man, uh, just, again, I thought that was a great interview. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, Dennis uh, seems to be a very intellectual guy. For sure. Uh, it seems there's there's a lot more to him than just barbecue. Real interesting for us, even yeah. behind the scenes, to yeah. learn more about him. So, yeah, sure. I mean, it's I think it's also really cool to put a face to the person who has these products in the store that a lot of us here in Texas have been using for a really long time. So no doubt. If you're at the store and you see War Pig and stuff, that's him. Yeah, that's him. That's the guy behind it all. Mm-hmm. And... Again, I don't even remember if this was on or off camera because we did talk for about 30 minutes off camera just hanging out. Uh, it's a one-man shop. Yeah. 
he's marketing, he's social media, he's sales, he's procurement, he's everything. And just the same thing with us. I mean, you're looking at the company plus dad, right? Dad does a lot for us. I'm not going to take anything away from dad. So you're literally looking at us. You'll never see my dad. So it's not, you can't look at him, but you're looking at basically all of the company right here. Uh, Dad does a lot of free work for us. So we appreciate dad very much, but, uh, yeah, no, just just a great, great, great interview. I love meeting people in barbecue because it's just cool to hear the stories. It's cool yeah. to see how they came up and everything. And I just I just absolutely love it. So one more time, thank you, Dennis, for coming on. We really truly appreciate it. Yeah, these a lot of these people, they're more than just barbecue, and it's really, really fascinating to find out. So hopefully you guys get to have a glimpse of that when you're listening or watching this podcast. Absolutely. So moving on this weekend, we're staying at home. No competition. We're going to be grilling up some stuff in the backyard. We're going to be putting out some backyard videos, which you guys know we still absolutely do. And we absolutely prioritize. So if there's anything you guys want to see us cooking in the backyard this weekend or coming up, let us know in the comments down below. I'll put a little post on social media as well. Hey, does anybody have anything that they want us to cook for a video? Anything at all. Let us know. We are here for you guys. Next week, we're going to have one of my really good friends, Sebastian with Barbecue Fiends, on the podcast. And I have a feeling it's going to be a really, really great interview. And I have a feeling it's going to be long. I think we're going to have a lot to talk about because Sebastian, I'm not going to tell his story, but he has has a lot going on and a lot of great things going on. So we're looking forward to that. Again, thank you to everybody that listens, watches, all that good stuff. We really, truly appreciate you. Yeah. Anything else? No, that's it. We'll see you on episode 25. Yeah, sorry for the weird intro today. Yeah. I'm telling you, I was watching those old videos. Ooh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Or wait, no, how did I say it? <laughs> oh, uh, what's going on, everybody? Alonzo here with GulfCoastSmoke.com. And today, that's the way I used to do it. So, a and lot I'm of changed. Sabrina. A lot there has changed. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.